Hey guys, I'm Steven Bird, and uh, welcome back to part two of our five-part series in going from Lightorama to X-Lights. Uh, now basically in the part one, all we did was we set everything up, uh, we got the lighting networks going, and now we are ready to go into the layout. Uh, so now basically whenever it comes to layouts, um, I am one of those people who love to just go ahead and put my layout together completely from scratch. Uh, I know a lot of people like to import things and all that, uh, importing, there's nothing wrong with that at all, uh, but it definitely makes it at least a little bit more confusing in my opinion, um, as it's just easier for me to just lay it all out there and, uh, you know, I turn on some music and just kind of enjoy it and put it all together. Uh, so then basically what we're going to be doing here is we've already got our setup, which is from channel 1 to 16 on Universe 1. Uh, this is with one Lightorama controller, Gen 3, uh, and basically we're going out through the USB uh, COM3 port on with a uh, 115,200 bond or baud rate. Uh, so now basically we will go into the layout tab here and we're going to go ahead and just do one single line. Now usually in RGB this would be 150 channels as you have 50 bulbs and three channels per bulb. But in this instance we want to go ahead and make it to where it is one channel in particular. That's it, just one channel. And this will, it will know uh, by saying the start channel there that that will be channel one coming out of universe one until, unless you tell it differently. So basically what you want to do is you want to come down to the string type under string properties and go underneath RGB nodes and put single color. You can also do single color intensity as well. Uh, I'm somebody who just puts single color uh, instead of single color intensity. Now once you do that, you'll notice that it has start channel one and end channel one. And basically what that means is you have just created one strand of lights, uh, which is actually I have a strand of lights to my left right now. And um, basically what that is going to be is I'll be showing that in another video uh, in one of the future parts of an actually occurring, of me actually putting these together. Um, now basically whenever I model this prop, um, you'll see that with this one, uh, it's just one strand. Uh, you can change out however you would need to, say if you were on a house or anything like that, if it's a, some kind of prop. Um, now, it, it all works almost the exact same way. That's all you have to do. Uh, now, unfortunately, though, for some props, uh, you're going to have to actually go in and physically and manually uh, change the prop data in order to match what you would like to. Um, a great example of this is on my Halloween show, which is actually what I have right here. Uh, now basically this is one of my Halloween shows. I basically spread everything out, um, at least for this show in particular. Uh, but basically I have some pumpkins right here. I have two singing pumpkins and then two others that are only, I believe it is five channels, somewhere around there. Three channels, five channels. Uh, but basically what I've done here is you'll see that I have my left singing face from channel 17 to 24. Now if you normally, you can usually just go in and do create download and you create a whole new download. And as it will download models, you can go in and put in like a singing element of P1. That'll bring that in. However, you'll notice that it actually goes more than eight channels, which is what we're desiring. We want that eight channel number. That's a main number for us. So what, we, what is different here is that if you go into this model, even if you scroll down and put this from RGB nodes to single color, it's still going to span a good amount of channels. It's 300, 400, about 300 channels. Um, so basically what you're going to have to do is this is one of those instances where you're going to have to go into the model data and change this. Now basically, unfortunately, it is very time consuming. It can, it can get very time consuming. But you'll see it here, and you can see that each one, it makes its own one. Every single bulb is another pixel, basically. Each one with three channels. That's why it's so high. If you go into this other one that I made, and I go into model data, you'll see that you'll have channel one for the under eyes, channel two for the over eye on the left side, channel three for the over eye on the right side, Four, five, six, seven, and eight, all down here, all modeled out. Like I said, it is very time consuming. Um, so I am happy to share this on the um, X Lights Google, uh, the Google Drive, if anybody needs it. Uh, but basically, uh, this is how you would go about doing that. And once you click OK and you save that, you'll notice that right now it is under 17 
to an end channel of 24. So it'll have eight channels total. And I have two singing faces here. So I have one there and one there. And each one is eight channels. And all you have to do is once you do it once, you just copy it over and paste it. <clears throat> now if we go back into our other instance that we had, like I said, with just the one, just the one uh, string here, uh, we can also do this with other, like any kind of custom, or a cube, circle, anything like that. You can even do candy canes the same way. Uh, you'll just go down here and you'll have a number of candy canes, nodes per cane. Uh, you could do 18, although that will make uh, 18 channels. Uh, but with this one, you'll see for this instance, instead of saying lights per cane, it won't matter uh, because you're making it one strand. So you'll have channel two, three, and four. So two, three, four. And you just plug each one up to your LOR controller just as needed, and everything will work out just fine there. So, uh, like I said, it, it can get confusing, but uh, you break it down to its simplest parts. Um, it definitely is doable. Uh, so that's exactly how that works. So that how that is how you will model your props on X lights to match all your Lightarama channels. Uh, you just do this again and again and again, and eventually you can end up getting set up like this for an instance with my Halloween show or with Christmas show, which is obviously bigger. Um, you just keep doing it again and again. Like I said, there is a way to import it, uh, but in my opinion, doing it just like this, uh, you can kind of set things up as needed. Uh, that's exactly where this comes in. These are uh, dumb RGB floods. So you just have to be able to know how many channels you want um, and make sure the big one is on these any kind of prompt that you're doing that you want to make LOR, make sure that that string type changes to single color. So that will about do it here for part two of our video. We're moving on to part three. So I hope you guys enjoyed, and I will see you guys in the next video.